Since it's maintenance day today, I thought why not do my water change with you guys and go through my weekly maintenance routine on my 220 gallon reef tank. My routine looks a lot different than water changes on my other tank, a wee little 40 gallon. It's actually a lot easier of a process, but a much larger volume of water to work with, which makes up for any of that easiness that this method gives me. But alas, water changes still need to be done, so it's time to go through my whole maintenance process with y'all. So to start off this water change process, I need to first mix up some salt water. So first thing is first, I turn on my RODI. I use a SpectraPure 90 gallon RODI system and this RODI functions really well. I mean, I really love this thing, except I initially bought it for my 40 gallon tank. And now with the 220 gallon build, it takes a really really long time to make the amount of water I need. I definitely need to upgrade to their 180 gallon unit ASAP before I drive myself crazy, but I just let the water fill these five gallon jugs I have here, which I will then add over to mix in my handy dandy brute trash can. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I actually have this thing on wheels, which is super convenient to move around even though it's it's the wheels. They, they only work half of the time. I don't know, I guess salt got on it or something because they're just not the way they used to be, but hey. Inside, I have good old faithful power head here. I lost the magnet though, so it's kind of just swirl it around for that max, you know, that max salt water mixing effect. Voyager 2 power head. I got this thing a million years ago, like before I got my first salt water tank even. I was naive back then and thought I would start off with this 300 odd gallons mega tank, but instead I switched to a small BioCube 29 gallon, which ended up being my first tank. So this power had gathered dust for a really long time, but now it comes in handy for water changes. Even though the magnet is missing, we make it work. We make it work, y'all. I also have my heater here. I have a Eheim 300 watt heater and it, it does the trick. Those are pretty much the essentials for mixing up my salt water, but I also have this Seache Synchro pump in here attached to this long tubing, and I use this guy to pump the water back into my tank. It also doubles as a way to speed up the mixing process, which is really nice. You know, super drive that salt water mixing. Comes in super handy and has made my water changes so much easier. I will show you here in a second how I actually use it, but in terms of salt, I use Red Sea Blue Bucket. I'd use Tropic Marin, but you gotta use like your entire body to rip that lid open, like even slightly open, like a can of sardines to get that thing lifted. It's a mess and I won't do it. Red Sea Blue Bucket is a little dirtier salt. It gets my brute trash can quite messy, but the elements of this salt match what I personally keep in my tank. But I don't know, salt is salt, man. Salt is salt. Once some of my water from my RODI is made, I add it to the bucket and I begin to mix in my salt. I love using this Hannah Checker salinity probe. It tells you the salinity reading and and the temperature, y'all. It's a total game changer. Honestly, I cannot go back to that refractometer life. And now that the salt is mixing, it is time to clean the glass a bit. I like to clean the back wall of the tank too, usually, but today it's not so dirty. So we're just gonna leave it alone because I'm lazy, you know? Just, it's not going to happen. And after that, we're going to move on to the sump. My sump is an absolute nightmare of a mess right now. Truly, it is disgusting. I have all of these products that I use scattered around. My filter socks need replacing, my skimmer needs a cleaning, and there is salt creep just about everywhere. So while this water is mixing, it's really important that we clean this up a little bit. I already cleaned out my filter socks, so I just have to pop those back in. I clean them by hosing them down with the hose outside, letting them dry overnight. So I cycle between two sets. It's an absolute nightmare. Honestly, I really hate filter socks more than anything. I mean, truly more than anything, I hate filter socks and I'm looking to actually stop using them in the future, perhaps, I don't know. Next up is cleaning out this nasty mess that's dripping all over me. I use water in the sink and this cheap little skimmer brush set I got on Amazon. I'm going to link all of these products and equipment I have in the description of this video if you're ever interested in any of this stuff as well. But it's a good little set to not get 
get your hands dirty, you know, because there's nothing worse than getting your hands dirty with Skim 8. I've gotten used to the smell recently by pretending I'm just visiting a volcano, you know, and all that sulfur from, from the geysers, you know. I just pretend that, you know, I'm on a trip to see, a, you know, beautiful geysers and uh, it, it gets it, it gets me by the the stench of the, the skimmer cleaning, you know. After the skimmer cup is nice and scrubbed off, I dry this guy off with paper towels. I know you don't have to, but I do, I dry it off anyway. I feel like it removes a lot of those spots that you miss, you know, and it avoids dripping all over the place, you know, which is good too. Now that the skimmer is back, I'm just taking a wet towel with RDI water and cleaning some of the salt creep off and removing any products I don't use daily, you know, just generally tidying things up here, get it nice and clean. Yeah, that's nice. Now look at that sump. That is a tidy sump if they ever did see one. Once a month, I do do a deep cleaning on the sump area, which involves a whole different water change process. If y'all are interested in how I go about that, let me know in those comments. It's definitely my most hatred maintenance, but I'll record it if you wanna see it. You know, I got you. Now that the sump is looking decent, it's time to get the water change equipment ready. I use this Python hose to remove the water from my tank. I have a bunch of attachments, but I kind of just go with the longest one so it can stay put in place. Also, I'm really short, so it's the most handy. I just attach the Python to the hose outside the back of my house. So once I turn on the hose, it will create a suction and suck out all of the water from my tank, which is super convenient because the water just gets dumped outside in this area. You know, it's bushes anyway. Next, I turn off my power heads and my pump and using this little clip attachment here to keep the Python hose in place while I go turn on the hose outside so the magic can begin. Once the water gets going, I like to carefully sift the sand just a little bit, you know, just a little bit. I mean, I try not to disturb it too much. My tank is struggling to keep up nutrients right now, so the sand sifting doesn't really hurt. And it's nice to see a cleaner sand bed, you know, just a little bit of sifting is okay. I like to kink the hose as I'm doing this so I can control the water flow and how much sand is going into the tube. It's a bit of a mission, honestly, especially because this tank is so much taller than me, but we make it work. We make it work. I like to take out about this amount before I'm done and now can go turn off the water hose outside. Now it's time to pump the water back in. I'm taking that CJ pump in my brute trash can I was talking about earlier and adding that large tubing into my sump area, pop it directly by my pump. Then I turn on my tank power heads and pump and just let her rip. This method is so much better than just pouring in gallons of water by hand, I'll tell you. The tank fills up so quickly, it's amazing. Truly cannot do a water change on this 220 gallon without it. And now that the water change is done, I do a quick clean of the outside glass. Also like to test my water parameters just to double check that everything is in line and where I like to keep it. Check your water parameters frequently, y'all. This is so important. I cannot stress that enough. And that's it. Now the tank is looking much cleaner, much nicer, and that's my maintenance done for this week. It's not the most efficient maintenance process per se, but it works. I dream of one day having a system that just does water changes automatically for me. That is definitely the ideal scenario as this process isn't particularly the most pleasant, but hey, it's the bones of this hobby, I guess. You just gotta do it. Interested in hearing about what your maintenance process looks like and what your water changes are? How much do you do? When do you do them? Do you even do them at all? Let me know in the comments. Really would like to hear because I'm definitely wanting to change this process up and make sure to hit subscribe on your way out and watch this 220 gallon come to life. It's only been running for a year, so it's going to be a good one. So stay tuned for that.